Now, on to some of the questions that uh, students sometimes uh, ask me about. Now, one of them just has to do with general uh, issues that deal with transition to year three, from year three to year four. And year four is an interesting combination of things that you have to do and also things that you do because you love to do them. And that's where a lot of the choice in year four comes in. I'm not going to go through all the details of the things that you have to do, uh, the things like the numbers of electives and the sub-I and everything, uh, and, and just talk for a little bit about uh, some of the other expectations. One, one of the expectations, for example, regarding electives uh, is that you shouldn't use your fourth year as a year that is a pre-internship year, that all you do is study and do electives or sub-internships in one narrow field. This is your last chance to do something that might not otherwise get the chance to do, something that uh, is different, uh, study in a field that is completely unrelated to your uh, eventual residency, doing some international study, maybe some uh, research, but just things that uh, are different and that you won't have a chance to do in the future. And in fact, Dartmouth encourages uh, you to do that. Uh, there's a requirement that you have some diversity in your electives at Dartmouth uh, and not, again, use the year as kind of a pre-internship year. So again, do things that you love to do during your, uh, your fourth year at Dartmouth, uh, in addition to all the things that you know that you have to do. Students often ask me about uh, sub-internships. That is a requirement at Dartmouth, uh, and remember that you can only call it a sub-internship if it's at least four weeks long. Shorter experiences don't count for that. Uh, I'm asked a lot, uh, when should I do a sub-internship? Most students wind up doing them in the early part of the year, and that really means uh, July, August, September, or if you have an elective in June of your third year, you can do a sub-internship then. The reason a lot of students like to do them early is the uh, Dean's letter is currently sent in, or will be sent in for your years, uh, as of October 1st now. So if you want to get the narrative, the report from your sub-internship onto your dean's letter, you need to do it early on. Now there are a couple of exceptions uh, to think about uh, when scheduling your sub-internship. For example, if you were a student who really excelled in your third year and got honors in most of your clerkships, and especially the clerkship where you're applying for your residency, it may matter a little bit less to you to do a sub-internship early on. The people who are looking at your applications will already know that you're a stellar student and uh, and having a, a honors grade on the sub-internship may not add so much. But if your performance was more in the high pass range, for example, on, in the field that you want to go into, it's more critical, I think, to do the sub-internship earlier on in the fourth year and really put everything you've got into it, uh, both time-wise, uh, having no distractions going on during that time, in an effort to just do the very best you can on your sub-internship. Uh, hope to get an honors grade, which will really bolster your applications for your internship and residency. So that's one bit of advice for sub-internships. Another question that comes my way a lot is, how many should I do and where should I do them? And, and that really depends on uh, what specialty you're planning to go into. There are a lot of students who do multiple sub-internships, and the additional ones count as electives, by the way, but show up on your transcript as a sub-internship. and. Uh, when you do multiple sub-internships, students will usually go and do them at uh, different institutions. Uh, sometimes students refer to them as tryouts or audition sub-internships. More sub-internships tend to be done as students are applying in a more competitive field, and some examples of those might be plastic surgery, or orthopedic surgery, or urology, for example. And it's a good idea to have some sense about where you think you'd like to go for your residency in those specialties and strongly think about doing one of those audition sub-internships at that site or at multiple of those sites. And we'll work with you uh, in doing that. Uh, we understand that in certain competitive fields there's a need to do these and we'll grant some leeway in terms of uh, some of the issues of diversity in your elective time that we talked about a little bit earlier on. So that pretty much covers uh, most of the high points for sub-internships. Uh, other questions that come my way, uh, 
you know, what about uh, the student who has difficulty deciding between one or, or two or more different specialties? Uh, uh, about 80% of you, in, in my experience, are going to figure out what you want to do by the spring of your third year. So it probably is just going to happen as a matter of course and it won't be an issue. But for some of you, it will be. And the path you follow to try and resolve that can take a couple of different uh, directions. One is that if it's just two areas that you're concerned about, say pediatrics and OBGYN, a good plan is to think about doing some electives very early on in your, third, in your fourth year or at the end of your third year. Uh, in those areas and try to sort out which of those specialties really feels the best to you. It's a little bit different story uh, if you're thinking about three or four or multiple different uh, specialty areas and every once in a while I do get a student comes in and says I can't decide if I want to be an anesthesiologist, a pediatrician, a surgeon, an internist, or a family medicine doc uh, and that complicates things a little bit more. Doing one or, or even two electives isn't usually going to help you solve that problem. Uh, and that's where uh, consideration, I think, of a split year uh, can be really useful to try and extend your time in medical school, have the ability to take more electives in more different fields uh, without the pressure of having to make a decision early on and get your applications in early. So split years at Dartmouth have been really popular uh, for students to do. Uh, as far as how that affects your application for residency, uh, this is something that Sue Harper, the other assistant dean for medical education, and I talk about all the time. Uh, and our opinion overall is that a split year that's done uh, at the request of the student is something that uh, only it can enhance somebody's application for residency. Uh, there are lots of opportunities and options uh, for that split year in terms of broader diversity of electives that you take, the opportunity for research, the opportunity for some international work, uh, and all of those can be really helpful in making that kind of a career choice. So that's my advice, I think, about uh, the career choice issue if you have more than one uh, area that you're considering. I get asked sometimes about uh, research uh, and what the role there is. Uh, a, a lot of students uh, don't particularly have an interest in research and for the most part I don't think that if the interest is not there that you should feel compelled to do that. You should do uh, and go into a field where you're doing what you really love to do uh, and not something where you feel compelled to do uh, something like research. So if you really love research uh, by all means get out and, and do that. Uh, uh, there are some limitations as to how many weeks of research can count on your transcript as far as uh, your, uh, th th your record goes, but that doesn't limit the number of weeks of research that you can actually do. So some students can do uh, 12 weeks of research during your fourth year or even more if you decide to split your year, but do it if it's something that you really love. One exception to that, uh, and, and actually hopefully not an exception to that, is uh, some residency programs, some of the more competitive ones, uh, may look highly on some time spent in research or a publication in the application process. If that's the case for you, uh, then by all means uh, make sure that you get some research done during your fourth year, and again consider uh, splitting your fourth year uh, to get a meaningful research project done. You don't want to research to look like you're just punching your ticket to get something done. It should be something where you clearly have an interest uh, and can be productive. The issue of uh, highly competitive fields, uh, what's the advice that I have uh, for that? Uh, first, if it's something that you really love to do, I, I tell students to take a shot at it and go for it. Okay? Uh, there are some fields where uh, they may use a particular board score, for example, as a cutoff, uh, and different programs will say we're not even going to consider a student unless they have a board score of 200 something, usually in the uh, mid to high 200s areas. Uh, again, I don't think that should necessarily dissuade you from doing something that you think you really love to do. Uh, if you get a lot of experience in that area, if you have a mentor that you work well with, uh, maybe you've done some research because you really like doing research in that area, uh, all of those things can bolster your application. 
uh, and good clinical performances on audition types of sub-internships or electives can really boost your uh, chances of getting an uh, internship and residency in a competitive field. So my advice is generally to, to go for it if it's something that you really love to do. Uh, hopefully you'll be successful. We've seen a number of students be successful in getting residencies where uh, we thought their chances, uh, to be honest, were fairly low, but uh, they've succeeded as well. So we never want to try and uh, dissuade somebody from doing something that they really